Hey math students, how you doing? So today I thought I would uh, uh, pose a problem. Uh, I don't know if you've ever done this, but I certainly have, where you're riding your bike and you run over something sticky and it sticks onto your bike tire. And then uh, you, know, you hear it every once in a while, do this poop, 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 like that when you're, uh, when you're riding every time it hits the ground again. And also, if you're like me, you start wondering, well, I wonder what kind of shape this is, uh, this is moving in. And right in front of us, we see that exact thing. Well, we see a model of that exact thing. We see a circle that is rolling along the x-axis, and there's a point on that circle. And you can see that the point is fixed to a particular position on that circle, and as it rolls along, the point moves around the circle. Um, and let's see what else we notice about that circle. That uh, the, uh, the radius is obviously one, the center, is one unit above the x-axis and whoop right there okay as just as we pass through the y-axis uh, the point on our circle hit the origin so that's and right there negative 2 pi it hits it as well so uh, that's uh, that's that seems to be the, uh, um, the most salient characteristics of uh, the circle so uh, what I'm wondering is what path is this point moving in? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna show you the path. There it is. Uh, and as you see, as the point moves around the circle, it's tracing out this kind of uh, orange colored path that is called a cycloid. And cycloids are very, very interesting. Um, if you're into that kind of thing, and I know I am. Uh, and uh, what I wanna to do today is I wanna come up with an equation for a cycloid. So my suggestion, my suggestion is instead of trying to come up with an equation y equals some function of x, let's come up with uh, parametric equations, okay? So we'll take a, uh, uh, a variable t, a parameter t, and then we'll define x to be a function of that t and y to also be a function of that t, okay? So what shall we use for t? Well, my suggestion is the center here, okay? The center of this circle is moving along, and uh, uh, we see that uh, um, the center is just moving at a constant pace, okay? And not only that, let me stop it for a second, okay? Here we are at zero, and when I... Uh, because this is a, a circle with uh, radius 1, when I move over here to where the, cer the center is at 2 pi, our point has gone one rotation around the circle. And that's obvious because this length right here is 2 pi, which is also the circumference of our circle. Okay? So t is going to be our, uh, uh, our parameter. And uh, so I guess first, let's come up with parametric equations for just just for the center of that circle okay so that's really easy x is t and y is 1 okay this point is always going to have an x coordinate of t and it's going to have a y coordinate of 1 so that part was really easy okay now what we're going to do is we're going to use that plus where this point is in relation to this to come up with our uh, uh, our parametric parametric equations for that point. And let's start with the easier one first. Let's start with the y-coordinate, okay? And sometimes it's easier to see a y-coordinate if you actually uh, look at a horizontal line that's going through that point. And now you can see, okay, well this is just bouncing up and down between 0 and 2. And uh, as a matter of fact, if I had another circle that was just still there, and I had a point rotating around that circle, you can see uh, that the y-coordinates are exactly the same. That horizontal line goes through both of those points, okay? And uh, now hang on a second. Uh, let me stop this, and let me pull this back again. So when t equals zero, this point is at the minimum. And when t equals pi, the point is at the maximum. And when t equals 2 pi, the point's back at the minimum again. 
I think I know what kind of uh, uh, simple harmonic motion this is. If it starts at the minimum, that is a negative cosine. And it's a negative cosine where the amplitude is 1, the vertical shift is 1, that's why it goes between 0 and 2, then the period is 2 pi. That is, uh, that's going to be negative cosine of t plus 1, or another way to write that would be 1 minus cosine of t. Mm-hmm, okay, interesting. Uh, let's, uh, let's see what else we got now. So that's, that's our y-coordinate. Our y-coordinate is going to be 1 minus the cosine of t. Now let's check out the x-coordinate. Let's get rid of this horizontal line, and instead let's draw a vertical line there. And uh, let's move along there. And okay, the vertical line is a little more difficult to figure out exactly what's going on because it goes kind of quickly and then it comes almost to a complete stop. And then it boogies along and then almost comes to a complete stop again. Hmm. All right. Well, again, I think this is more easily uh, analyzed if we break it into two pieces. Uh, one piece is just t. It's just the, uh, the in this case, backward, but in a second it's going to be forward motion. There we go, forward motion. Um, and then the other one is going to be, uh, let's look at this, oops, not that. Let's look at this. There we go, that circle again. And let's look at, uh, at that. So in relation to the center here, uh, the x coordinate is just going down and then, whoops, down and then up. And I'm saying down when it's left and up when it's right because I'm talking about the x coordinate. Okay, so this, again, this is just relative to the center. This is just simple harmonic motion. And uh, again, let's, um, let's take a look at this. Let's stop it and pull it back over here. Um, so when t is 0, the x-coordinate is also going to be 0, right? And when t starts to increase, the x-coordinate relative to the, to the center here actually goes down, okay? Because, uh, because this is to the left of the center. It goes all the way down, and then it starts coming back up again. Okay, well, what kind of simple harmonic motion is that? It's going, it's at the point 0, 0, and then when the angle increases, it actually goes down. That's a negative sign. So my x-coordinate is going to be t, that's capturing the motion of the center, uh, minus the sine of t. Okay? And uh, so x is t minus the sine of t, and y is uh, 1 minus the cosine of t. And if we put that in motion again, uh, now look over here, I know we've been looking at the graph here, but look over to the left at this equation right here. I've written out in parametric form for Desmos, t minus sine of t, that's what my x-coordinate is, and 1 minus cosine of t, that's what my y-coordinate is. That's exactly what we just discovered. So sure enough, the parametric equations work. They uh, map out that, uh, that exact path there. So what if I wanted to take these two parametric equations and turn them into one uh, equation where uh, y is a function of x. It looks like I can do it. it you know, this doesn't break the uh, vertical line rule anywhere. So it looks like uh, we should be able to do that. Well, good luck, because as I look at this, if I were to try to express x as a function, uh, sorry, if I were to try to express t as a function of x, I have x equals t minus the sine of t? Yikes. Um, I don't think I can do that. As a matter of fact, I've been looking at this problem for a long time. Uh, this is beyond me. And uh, what's interesting is that if you look this up, if you, if you Google uh, cycloid and look for the equation of a cycloid, you will always find it defined as a, uh, um, uh, in parametric equations, you'll never find it defined any other way. Uh, now, one, one more thing, just in case you got a little extra time and uh, you feel like uh, exploring cycloids a little bit. Uh, the cycloid actually turned out to be the answer of a famous problem that was posed by uh, the Swiss mathematician, 
Uh, let me make sure I got this guy right. I know, I know it's one of the Bernoulli brothers. I believe it was Johann Bernoulli uh, back in like the 17th century. Johann Bernoulli uh, uh, posed the brachistochrone problem. Okay, look that up uh, because uh, it's a very interesting problem. It basically says uh, if you take a bead on a wire and you slide it down the wire and you, the only uh, the only force on that bead is gravity and it's a frictionless wire so the wire is not slowing it down at all uh, what will be the shape uh, that will get you from point A to point B the fastest and as it turns out it's a cycloid it's an upside down cycloid okay uh, which is really weird it seems to me just those that's like a totally uh, uh, different context and different environment for this uh, curve to show up in, but sure enough, it does. All right, so that's the end of uh, parametric equations. Uh, I just kind of figured y'all might be wondering, well, what's the point of having parametric equations? Well, the point of having them is because sometimes you get a curve like a cycloid that really can't be described any other way, at least not without just considerable trouble. Okay, see y'all at the next video. Bye-bye.